here with friend of the channel, Spectral Evolver, Will Klingemeyer, and we are going to be talking a little bit about voltage starving. Will posted a couple videos recently where he was voltage starving the DFAM and the subharmonicon, which got a little bit of traction, and so I thought it'd be cool for us to talk a little bit about it. Will, to start us out, for the folks out there who haven't heard of voltage starving, what is this? Well, basically, uh, the what it is is in the title. You're giving uh, a piece of gear less voltage than it would like, and trying to see what might happen. So, in the case of musical gear, a lot of it runs on nine volts DC, like a stomp box, or something, and and you can just plug in an old nine volt, maybe six, seven volts, something like that. See what happens. But yeah, you're just giving it giving it less voltage and taking the circuit to places that it wasn't intended to be. And so for, for circuit bending, uh, I I did a couple, after seeing your video, I got excited about this and I did a couple experiments. So I just took this, this is a, a 10K uh, variable resistor and I just stuck this between the battery and the circuit itself. I tried this with uh, my Buddha box. And I also tried this with an Atari Punk console. Again, if you're doing any kind of circuit bending, uh, then it's a worthwhile thing to try as one of one of the things you do. But so, well, what kind of sounds are you getting from the Moog equipment? Well, the the DFAM. It was really interesting. So the first thing that happened, the, well, first the DFAM wants 12 volts DC. So at that, it's like full volume and good. Around 9 volts, the noise generator just started to fall apart. And then as it got lower and lower, the sequencer went totally haywire. Actually sped up and became really uh, inconsistent. Yeah, that was one of the really interesting things in the video is that as as you starve the voltage, the sequencer actually got faster. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's sort of at first seems counterintuitive because we think about oh things slowing down like the old robot uh, burning out when the voltage isn't there. Um, but I yeah. guess it's just a matter of how the clock works. And so then if if the clock doesn't have the proper amount of voltage, it's not about it's slowing down. Uh, it's about, it just, it's not able to keep time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was really unexpected, but I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen, but that's just what happened. Uh, of course, the final output volume went down, which is, that's, that much is not surprising. So I really had to crank it, even have some makeup gain at the end uh, to kind of, kind of bring it back up. But yeah, that's, that's basically what happened with the DFAM. The subharmonicon, totally different results, uh, totally fell out of tune. The sequencer never went, went haywire, or sequencers, which was sort of surprising, because I figured you know, the DFAMs did, maybe subharmonicon would too, but um, yeah, it just really just fell out of, fell out of tune. So I, I was saying, you know, for the, the circuit bent things, I, I was using uh, this, I, I literally, took the battery pack out, I'll, you, know, you can see in the videos, I took the battery pack out and I just put this between the battery pack and the battery contacts inside the thing. How are you doing the starving the voltage on the, the DFAM? Because presumably it has an external adapter, right? It does, yeah. So it has its own power supply. Uh, as I was poking around wanting to get into this, I found a, a cheap power supply that basically has a continuously variable knob. You can see the meter read out and I just started about 12 volts, which is what DFAM wants, and then just kind of kept kept sagging it down. Um, and, and there's the starve. Well, so here's the question then. When I do this with circuit bent stuff, I, I don't care if I fry my pink magic wand that I bought for a dollar. <laughs> uh, uh, are, are you hurting the, the DFAM, the, these things that aren't that cheap yeah. uh, by, by doing this? Are you risking anything with your equipment? supposedly yes yeah it's it, it that's what i'm told now that said uh everything's fine and happy at this point um but i definitely looked into it beforehand and 
people are like, yeah, it, it definitely can. There could be long-term problems. But there's, there's only one way to find out. So make sure you're recording. Okay. So is, so is this, I, I mean, I guess, what's our advice? Is it don't try this at home or start with things that you don't care about breaking? Um, yeah, I would say you try it at your own risk. Poke around, see if someone else uh, has done it. Uh, and you and have. Then, yeah, <laughs> so now you know you can... I've, I have I had that uh, power supply plugged into the DFAM for well over an hour and just going... And now I've got the original one back in there and it's it's totally fine. And so no issues. All the stomp boxes I've used, you know, I starved. You know, both of these, this is a, a pedal I made and then this is one by Earthquaker Devices. You know, they're they're both fine. Keeping with the idea of try at your own risk, I, I mean, my my thought process would be a stomp box. I'm less worried about because a stomp box, oftentimes they run on batteries and those batteries will be dying sometimes. And so they, they got to be a little bit used to or they've got to be robust enough to deal with. And again, this conjecture um, robust enough to deal with a dying battery. Yeah. In fact, that's. To the best of my knowledge, that's where it all came from back in the day. You know, early stomp boxes in the 60s and 70s did run on a battery. They didn't have an external power supply. And people found, hey, why is why does my pedal sound different today than it did yesterday? It's because the battery was dying. And then they go, oh, I actually like that. So, like, uh, I think it was somebody in the Allman Brothers band would just carry around a whole slew of 9 volts. Or even Eric Johnson now is known to... You know, have certain batteries at a voltage so that he can get the sound he wants. So that's kind of where it came from. So then talking about specifically about the stomp boxes, are there particular kinds of effects that are more conducive to voltage starving in your experience? Distortions or delays, the digital mm -hmm. ones, the analog ones? Analog for sure. Uh, digital tends to just totally fall apart and that you can actually do more damage. It's like is and not desirable sounds when that happens. So analog for sure and distortions like this is a tone bender does really nice kind of howl. You know, those are things like fuzzes tend to do really well with starving. I also have a delay that was really nice. That ended up turning into a distortion <laughs> uh being starved, but yeah, things things of that nature I've heard octave up it's really interesting. Mm. I don't have one, but any anything analog is worth trying. It's an exciting thing. You're never quite sure what's going to happen. Uh, a bit risky, but you know, it's. If you have some cheap gear, it's worth trying or just poke around. There's plenty of people on videos that, you know, uh, kind of say something cool could happen with this sort of thing. So if you're analog and a um, couple volts less, I think you're going to be in for some exciting stuff. Before we go, where, where can people check out more of your stuff? Yeah, uh, I got plenty of this uh, on my, my channel, Spectral Evolver, and, and more coming. And we'll throw a, we'll throw a link up uh, to that here too. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, appreciate you. Thanks for having me.